Hello and welcome. As much as I like to bring you a review of the most advanced, the most expensive, and the most out there Chinese electric vehicles, sometimes it's nice to just get back to basics. That's why I'm delighted to be bringing you a review of this, the Chang'an Lumen, a very simple little electric car with a starting price of just 7,300 US dollars. Let's get started. Of course, it's impossible to talk about any car in this category without addressing the very tiny elephant in the room, the Wuling Mini EV. That car is responsible for creating, or at least popularizing, this entire segment here in China. But while the Lumen Corn is clearly grasping for the crown of the Mini EV, it is doing it in a very different way, starting from the outside. While the Mini EV is cute in the sense that it looks like a larger car that was kind of shrank down, the Lumen Corn, or the Lumen from Chang'an, looks more like a well, anthropomorphized cartoon character. They even gave the headlights eyelids. These remind me of those things you see on Jeep Wranglers that make them look like they have angry eyebrows, but less aggro and more adorable. A couple of interesting things to note about this car. These headlights, while adorable, are halogen on all three trim levels, whereas the Mini EV has LEDs available for higher trim level cars. This thing does, however, have more advanced door handles, pop-out concealed ones versus the traditional ones on a Wooly Mini EV. This adds to the overall more rounded look of this car versus the Wuling. Speaking of the entire car, it's larger than the Mini EV, both in length and width, though it is slightly shorter. It's 3.27 meters in length and 1.7 meters wide. Not huge by any means, but noticeably larger than a Mini EV. Also larger than a Mini EV are these wheels. We got 14 inches, baby, versus those tiny baby 12-inch wheels on the Mini EV. Ballin'. While this car is wider and longer than the Mini EV, it also has a slightly shorter wheelbase than that car, so I guess I'm not surprised to learn that its rear cargo space is, well, equally tiny as that of the Mini EV. The Lumen, like its competitors, is only available with slow charge, not fast charge. I can tell you from experience that's not particularly convenient to use. When we picked up this car, it had 35 kilometers of range. We charged it for two hours, and it then had 66 kilometers of range. I really wish it was fast charge, but that kind of electrical architecture would probably make it considerably more expensive as well. Oh, wow. Just like the Mini EV, this thing has one single giant door on each side. Let's close that door and talk about the interior. Noticeably more width on this car. As I mentioned, it is wider and it is noticeable specifically in the shoulder area when you sit inside. Another thing that's very noticeable is right here. Every version of this car, all three trim levels, have a 10.25 inch center screen as standard, whereas the Mini EV makes do with a instrument cluster digital display and no center screen at all. The extra 2,500 US dollars you pay for the base trim level of this car is starting to make a little bit more sense. The rest of the interior, <laughs> incredibly simple. There are some color matching panels here in the center where you have your transmission knob, your window switches, your eco and sport driving modes. Look forward to testing the difference between those. And of course, your handbrake. There is no park function. This thing is like a manual. You just put it into neutral and pull the handbrake to park. There aren't a lot of other creature comforts to be found in the interior, but that's not surprising considering the price that we're talking about here. You do, of course, have your heating and air conditioning controls here, the physical buttons. You also have some USB ports, one here and one on the back for your rear passengers. But other than that, well, there's not much to be found. One thing that did surprise me, however, this is a mid-spec version, and it does have electrically adjustable rearview mirrors. Not bad. The interior is plastic fantastic, but so is the Mini EV and every other car in this segment. The overall style does feel more like a real grown-up car than the Mini EV, though some would argue that makes it less charming. Time for us to 
get out, making sure the parking brake is on first, and check out rear seat space. Not really looking forward to this, to be honest. Let's see. Try to adjust this to where I had it before, right about there. Okay. I am five foot nine inches tall, about 1.72 meters, and I've got about that much space between my knees and the seat. Headroom, about that much. Another fist there as well. The seating position, however, not good. My knees are obviously very, very high. My feet are very high because of the floor is very high. And then the backrests, which are non-adjustable, are very, very straight. I would say this is equally as uncomfortable as a mini EV, but that's not particularly surprising. I was relieved to learn that the Lumen has both driver and passenger side airbags as standard, something that isn't true on the Mini EV. Still, neither of them has anything in the way of traction control or electronic stability programming, so I'll have to resist my urge to push this tiny EV to its performance limits. The standard driving experience for this particular segment isn't particularly good. We're talking about cars that are priced between 4,000 and 10,000 US dollars, so you can't expect them to ride like an S-Class. I would say this car fits right in with its competitors. This thing has a slightly shorter wheelbase, as I mentioned, than the Wooling Mini EV, but it somehow manages to provide a ride that doesn't have quite as much head bobbing as the Mini EV. I'm not sure how it does that. Perhaps it has to do with the rear suspension. The Mini EV uses a non-independent multi-link, while this uses a trailing arm. I'm not sure why that happens, but all I can tell you is this feels ever so slightly more comfortable and more under control than a Mini EV. But while the ride might be slightly better than the Mini EV, I would say that the steering is actually somewhat worse. It's more rubbery and vague than the Mini EV. It almost feels like they put a power-assisted box onto a golf cart. The other inputs, like the brake pedal, are, well, pretty stiff. Surprisingly stiff for such a light, small car, actually. Of course, this thing is never intended to be used as a highway commuter, rather a city runabout. But I must point out the fact that NVH is pretty ridiculous at almost any speed. That starts with a single front-mounted electric motor, which whines all the time. Whether you're accelerating or whether it's regen, oh man, it's just so loud. There's also the fact that they seem to have increased cabin space without increasing the amount of insulation. I can tell because when you're having a conversation with someone in this car, it sounds like you're talking to them inside of an empty soup can. But let's get down to what really matters in this segment, and that's power. The Mini EV makes up to 30 kilowatts. This car matches that in its base and mid-spec trims. I'm driving the mid-spec right now, but there is what I'm choosing to call a performance version available, which makes 35 kilowatts. It appears Chang'an hasn't released torque figures for the Lumen, but I can at least tell you about the range. Entry-level cars squeeze a claimed 155 kilometers of CLTC range from a 13 kilowatt hour battery pack. Mid-spec cars get 210 kilometers from a 17.7 kilowatt hour pack, and the previously mentioned performance version is said to deliver 301 kilometers from a pack measuring 28 kilowatt hours. I would say that the specs and features of this car make it a better value than the Wuling Mini EV, and its driving experience is just as good, or just as bad, depending on how you think of it, as the Mini EV, and yet, while Chang'an sold 12,000 Lumen Corns in the month of October, Wuling sold 42,000 Mini EVs. It seems like the Mini EV is destined to hold on to its crown as the ultimate in tiny electric hatchbacks for a little bit longer.